Lesson 1, Debating Environmental Responsibility Morning, Anna. I was reading an article about the auto industry's stance on environmental regulations, and I wanted to get your take on it. Interesting, John. What did the article say? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Well, it seems that the major car companies and oil firms are pushing back against measures to reduce emissions and promote sustainability. Really? That's concerning. I would have assumed they'd be more receptive to environmental initiatives. You'd think so, right? But apparently, they're worried it will hurt their bottom line. I see. So they're prioritizing profits over social responsibility, it seems. Exactly. The article said they're lobbying against things like stricter fuel efficiency standards and electric vehicle incentives. That's disappointing. Don't they realize the long-term damage that kind of stance can have? That's what I wondered. You'd think they'd want to get ahead of the curve on green technology. Absolutely. The writing is on the wall when it comes to the need for sustainable practices. Agreed. But the article said these companies are really digging in their heels. That's short-sighted, in my opinion. They should be embracing the shift, not resisting it. My thoughts exactly. I just don't understand the logic behind prioritizing profits over the planet. Neither do I. At the end of the day, we all have to live with the consequences of environmental destruction. Right. And these companies have the resources to be part of the solution, rather than the problem. Exactly. I hope public pressure and legislation can push them to be more responsible corporate citizens. Me too. It's going to take a collective effort to drive real change, that's for sure. Lesson 2, The King of the Beasts Greetings, Anna. I've been reading about the majestic lion and his dominance in the animal kingdom. Did you know he's often referred to as the King of the Beasts? Ah, uh, yes, I'm quite familiar with the lion's regal reputation. What is it about these magnificent creatures that captivates us so? Well, their sheer size and power are certainly a big part of it. The male lion's impressive mane and roar command respect and awe from other animals. Absolutely. And they're not just physically imposing, are they? Lions are also known for their strategic hunting skills and their strong social bonds within their prides. That's true. They're highly intelligent and adaptable animals, able to thrive in diverse habitats, from the lush savannas to the harsh deserts. Indeed. And their hunting techniques are quite fascinating. The way they work together to take down prey is truly remarkable. Definitely. I find it intriguing how the lionesses do most of the hunting, while the male lions tend to focus on protecting the pride and defending their territory. Yes, the division of roles within the pride is quite fascinating. The male lions may be the kings, but the lionesses are the real backbone of the pride's survival. Absolutely. 
The lion's reign as the king of the beasts is well deserved, but it's the collective effort of the entire pride that allows them to thrive in the wild. Well said, John. The lion story is truly captivating, and it's no wonder they've captured the human imagination for centuries. I couldn't agree more, Anna. There's just something about these majestic creatures that continues to captivate and inspire us. Lesson 3. Negotiating Prices Hey Anna, I wanted to get your thoughts on negotiating prices. What do you think is the best approach? Ooh, good question. I find it really depends on the situation, but in general, I try to be polite and reasonable. Absolutely. You don't want to come across as too aggressive or demanding. Exactly. I usually start by complimenting the item or service, then gently inquiring about the pricing. I like that approach. Something like, that sounds really nice, but I was wondering if you might be able to work with me on the price a bit? Exactly. And if they come back with a number, I'll often say, hmm, that's a little higher than I was hoping to pay. What's the lowest you can do? Nice, that's a good way to keep the conversation flowing. Definitely. And if we can't quite meet in the middle, I'll sometimes throw in an alternative suggestion. Well, how about we split the difference? Ooh, that's a clever tactic. Meet them halfway to find a compromise. Exactly. It's all about striking that balance between being assertive, but also respectful. For sure. And if all else fails, you can always politely thank them and say you need to think it over. Absolutely. No need to get confrontational, just leave the door open for future negotiations. Great advice. I'll have to keep those strategies in mind next time I'm trying to get a good deal. Definitely. It's all about finding that sweet spot between your budget and their asking price. Absolutely. Thanks for the helpful tips, Anna. I feel more equipped to tackle price negotiations now. Lesson 4. Keeping Calm Morning, Anna. I've been meaning to ask you, how do you stay so composed in stressful situations? I tend to get a bit frustrated at times. You know, it's all about maintaining a level head, John. When things get tense, I find it's best to take a deep breath and approach the situation calmly. That's a great point. It's easy to get worked up but responding with a cool head can make all the difference, can't it? Absolutely. Staying calm allows you to think more clearly and come up with better solutions. Getting frustrated often just makes the situation worse. I can see that. It's like when you're dealing with a challenging task or a difficult person, if you let your emotions take over, it becomes much harder to find a resolution. Exactly. And you know, there are some practical techniques you can use to stay centered in those moments. Things like taking a short break, practicing mindfulness, or even just stepping back and looking at the bigger picture. That's really insightful, Anna. 
I'll have to try some of those strategies next time I find myself getting riled up. It's so important to stay in control of our emotions, isn't it? Definitely. When we can respond to stressful situations with poise and clarity, it not only helps us resolve the issue at hand, but it also sets a positive example for those around us. You make a great point. Maintaining composure, even in the face of adversity, can inspire others to do the same. It's a valuable skill to cultivate. Absolutely. And the more we practice it, the easier it becomes. It's about developing that mental resilience and learning to stay grounded, no matter what life throws at us. Well, I'm grateful for the advice, Anna. I'm going to make a concerted effort to keep my cool in tough situations from now on. It'll serve me well, I'm sure. Lesson 5, Negotiating Fairly Hey Anna, can I get your advice on something? I've got a tricky negotiation coming up and I want to make sure I handle it the right way. Absolutely, I'm happy to lend an ear. What are you looking to negotiate, and what's your main concern? Well, it's a business deal, and I want to make sure both parties have fair and reasonable rights. I don't want it to turn into a battle, you know? That's a great approach, John. When it comes to negotiations, it's important to keep the focus on finding a mutually beneficial outcome. Exactly. I don't want to just try to get the upper hand. I want this to be a collaborative process where we both feel like we're getting a fair deal. That's wise of you. Trying to strong-arm the other party is rarely the best strategy. It's much better to look for creative solutions that address both sides' needs. Absolutely. Do you have any tips on how I can strike that balance and ensure we both feel like the agreement is equitable? A few things come to mind. First, really try to understand the other party's priorities and concerns. Active listening goes a long way in finding common ground. That makes a lot of sense. I'll definitely make sure I take the time to truly understand where they're coming from. And then, when it comes to proposing terms, frame them in a way that highlights the mutual benefits. Focus on the positives for both sides. Ah, that's a great point. I can see how that would help create a more collaborative dynamic. Exactly. And don't be afraid to explore alternatives and compromises. The goal is to find a solution that works for everyone, not just one side. Wonderful advice, Anna. I feel much more prepared to approach this negotiation in a thoughtful, balanced way. Thanks for taking the time to walk me through it. Happy to help, John. Negotiations can be tricky, but with the right mindset and approach, you can absolutely find an agreement that leaves both parties satisfied. I appreciate it. All right, I'm feeling energized and ready to put these tips into practice. Wish me luck. Lesson 6 Chasing Dreams Morning, Anna. Did you catch the sailing race on TV yesterday? Good morning, John. Yes, I did. That was an incredible finish.
I couldn't believe the leader stopped to wave at the crowd. I know, right? It was such an unexpected move. He had a seemingly insurmountable lead, but then he just slowed down to acknowledge the fans. That's the thing about sports anything can happen. One moment you're cruising to victory, and the next, a split-second decision, can change the whole outcome. Absolutely. It just goes to show that you can't take anything for granted, even when you're in the lead. You have to stay focused and keep pushing until the very end. Definitely. And I think that's a great lesson for life in general. You can't get complacent, even when things are going your way. You have to keep chasing your dreams and never lose sight of the finish line. Wise words, Anna. You know, watching that race made me think about my own goals and ambitions. Am I doing enough to achieve them, or am I getting too comfortable? That's a really important question to ask yourself. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and lose sight of the bigger picture. But it's crucial to keep pushing forward even when the path ahead seems daunting. You're right. I don't want to be that sailor, waving to the crowd when I should be crossing the finish line. I need to stay focused and determined, no matter what obstacles come my way. I believe in you, John. If anyone can make their dreams a reality, it's you. Just remember to keep that competitive spirit alive, and never lose sight of what you're aiming for. Thanks, Anna. I really appreciate the encouragement. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but I'm ready to give it my all. Time to get back in the race. Lesson 7, Home Improvement Triumphs Yo, Anna. Guess what? I've been busy with some home improvement projects. Oh, really? Do tell. I'm always interested to hear about your DIY adventures. Well, first off, I finally replaced that old, flickering light switch in the living room. It was driving me crazy, but I watched a few online tutorials and got it done. Nice. Electrical work can be tricky, but it's so satisfying when you pull it off. What else have you been up to? I also patched up a small hole in the wall in the bedroom. You know, the one that's been bugging me for months? I spackled it, sanded it down, and painted over it. Good as new. Wow, look at you, Mr. Handyman. I'm impressed. Those little home repairs can really make a big difference, can't they? Absolutely. It's amazing what a difference a few simple fixes can make. The place just feels so much more put together now. I bet. It's always so satisfying to tackle those nagging little issues and finally cross them off the list. You must be feeling pretty proud of yourself. You bet I am. I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with my own handyman skills. Who needs a contractor, am I right? Haha, <laughs> well now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But seriously, good job, John. It's always great to see someone take pride in their work, especially when it comes to home improvements. Thanks, Anna. It's been a lot of fun, actually. Maybe I'll take on some bigger projects next.
The kitchen could use a little sprucing up. Oh, now you're talking. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Just don't forget to call me over when you need an extra set of hands, okay? You've got it. I'll be sure to keep you in the loop on all my future home improvement endeavors. Lesson 8, The Morning Routine Essentials Morning, Anna. I've got a quick question for you. Sure, what's up? When you're getting ready in the morning, what's the one thing you absolutely can't forget? Oh, that's easy, brushing my teeth, of course. It's the most important part of my morning routine. I knew you'd say that. It's the same for me. I mean, you can't leave the house without freshening up those pearly whites, right? Exactly. It's the foundation of a good day. Plus, you just feel so much more put together when you've taken care of that basic self-care step. Totally agree. I feel naked without my morning brushing sesh. Although, I have to admit, sometimes I get so caught up in the rest of my routine that I almost forget. Oh no, really? That would drive me crazy. I'm pretty ritualistic about it, brush, floss, mouthwash. The whole nine yards. Wow, the whole nine yards, huh? I'm more of a basic brusher myself. But you're right, I should probably step up my dental game a bit. Hey, whatever works for you. As long as you're keeping those teeth clean and healthy, that's what counts. But definitely don't forget, okay? You got it. Brushing my teeth is non-negotiable from now on. Can't leave the house without it. Good man. See, that's the kind of commitment I like to see. Maybe I'll even quiz you on your dental routine next time we meet up. Uh oh, better start flossing more regularly then. Don't want to get called out by the dental hygiene police. Haha, <laughs> wouldn't dream of it. I'm just looking out for your oral health, that's all. Can't have you walking around with subpar pearly whites. Well, I appreciate the concern. Seriously, thanks for the reminder. Brushing is now officially the first thing I do every morning. Lesson 9, Weighing Your Career Options Hey Anna, can I get your advice on something? Absolutely, what's on your mind? Well, I've been thinking a lot about my career lately and whether I should look for a new job. Oh, interesting. What's got you reconsidering your current position? It's not so much that I'm unhappy, but I feel like I've kind of hit a plateau in terms of growth and advancement. I see. Have you been able to have honest conversations with your manager about that? I have, but the feedback I've gotten is that there aren't really any opportunities for me to move up right now. Hmm, that's a tricky situation. Have you considered looking at other companies then? That's what I'm trying to figure out. The salary at my current job is good, but I'm wondering if the benefits and career development opportunities might be better elsewhere.
That's a really good point. Compensation is important, but the total package is key when evaluating job offers. Exactly. I don't want to jump ship just for a higher number on my paycheck, you know? Absolutely. You've got to look at the whole picture, things like health insurance, retirement plans, training programs, etc. Right, and the potential for advancement is huge too. I feel like I've kind of maxed out where I am now. Well, it sounds like you've really thought this through carefully. I think exploring other options could be a smart move if you're feeling stagnant. Yeah, I think so too. I guess the next step is to start networking and seeing what else is out there. Definitely. Just be sure to weigh all the factors, salary, benefits, growth potential. Don't make any rash decisions. You're right, we should consider the full picture. Thanks for the advice, Anna. I really appreciate you listening and helping me think this through. Of course, that's what friends are for. Let me know how the job search goes, okay? Will do. Catch you later. Lesson 10, Collaborating on Project Timelines Morning, Anna. Have you reviewed the project timeline yet? Hey John, yes I have. It seems like we may need to make a few adjustments. Oh really? What did you find when you looked it over? Well, a couple of the deadlines look a bit tight, especially for the design phase. Hmm, I was worried about that. Do you have any suggestions on how we can tighten things up? I was thinking we could push back the wireframing deadline by a week. That should give the team more time to really flush out the initial concepts. Okay, that makes sense. And what about the development phase? Is that timeline still feasible? I think so, as long as we can get those wireframes locked down quickly. Maybe we build in an extra buffer day or two there just to be safe. Good call. It's always better to be a little conservative with the schedule, especially for a project of this scale. Absolutely. I'd rather have a slightly longer timeline than risk missing a key milestone. Agreed. All right, let's go ahead and update the master schedule with those changes. Sounds good. I'll send the revised version out to the whole team so everyone's on the same page. Great, thanks Anna. I appreciate you taking a close look at this and providing your input. Of course, happy to help. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Couldn't agree more. All right, let's keep this project moving in the right direction. Lesson 11, Hunting Megafauna. Hey Anna, did you know that when humans first reached the Americas, Australia, and parts of Europe, they quickly wiped out large numbers of big animals? Really? I wasn't aware of that. What kind of large animals are you talking about? Mostly things like mammoths, mastodons, giant sloths, and other megafauna. 
These were massive creatures that went extinct not long after human arrival. Wow, that's fascinating. I wonder why they were able to kill off so many of these large animals so quickly. It's believed to be a combination of factors. Humans were highly skilled hunters, and the megafauna had little fear or experience dealing with human predators. I see. So they were essentially easy targets for the new human settlers? Exactly. The animals weren't adapted to evading human hunting techniques. It was likely an ecological disaster on a massive scale. That's really sad to think about. Do we know how long it took for these populations to be wiped out? In many cases, it happened within just a few hundred years of initial human contact. The pace of the extinctions was incredibly rapid. That's just astounding. It's amazing how much impact our ancestors had on the natural world, even back then. It really is. Makes you wonder what the world might have looked like if those megafauna had managed to survive. Definitely. It's an important lesson in the power of humans to dramatically reshape entire ecosystems, even with relatively primitive technology. Absolutely. It's a sobering reminder of our impact on the planet, even thousands of years ago. Lesson 12, Missed Connections Morning, Anna. I'm in a bit of a rush, I hope this train gets me to the station on time. Morning, John. What's the hurry? Do you have an important connection to catch? Exactly. My train to the airport is leaving in less than an hour and I really can't afford to miss it. I have a flight to catch this afternoon. Oh no, that sounds stressful. Why not take an earlier train just to be safe? I would, but the next one doesn't leave for another 20 minutes. I'm cutting it really close as it is. Yikes, that's cutting it close. Is there anything you can do to speed things up on your end? Not really. I'm already power walking through the station as fast as I can. I just have to hope this train makes up some time en route. Well, I've got my fingers crossed for you. Missing a connection is such a pain, especially when you have a flight to catch. Tell me about it. I'd hate to get stranded here and have to rebook everything. That would be a nightmare. Absolutely. Well, hang in there, John. I hope you make it with time to spare. Safe travels. Thanks, Anna. I appreciate the moral support. All right. Here's my train, wish me luck. Lesson 13, Morning Routine Hey Anna, what's your typical morning routine like? Well, I usually start my day by getting up around 7 a.m. First thing I do is brew a nice hot cup of coffee. Ah, the all-important morning coffee. Can't get going without that, can you? Exactly. While the coffee is brewing, I'll take a quick shower and get dressed for the day. Sounds efficient. 
What do you like to have for breakfast? I try to have something healthy, like oatmeal or yogurt with fruit. Gotta fuel up for the day, you know? Definitely. I'm more of a bacon and eggs kind of guy myself. But the healthy stuff is probably better for you. True, but sometimes I just can't resist a hearty breakfast. Once I've had my meal, I'll sit down and check my emails. Ah yes, the morning email catch-up. That's an essential part of the routine for most people these days. Absolutely. I find it's best to get that out of the way first thing, so I can focus on the rest of my workday. Good call. My morning routine is a bit more haphazard, I'll have to take some notes from you. Well, everyone's a bit different. The key is to find what works best for you and stick to it. Sound advice. Maybe I'll give your routine a try and see if it helps me start the day off right. Lesson 14, Planning a Getaway. Hey Anna, have you started planning any trips for the upcoming holiday season? You know, I have been thinking about taking a little weekend getaway. I could use a change of scenery. That's a great idea. Any destinations in mind that you're considering? I was thinking somewhere warm and tropical, maybe a beach town. I could really use some relaxation. Ooh, a beach vacation sounds lovely. Have you looked into any specific locations yet? Not really, I've just been browsing online for good hotel deals in different coastal areas. Well, let's see what we can find. What kind of amenities are you hoping for in a hotel? Hmm, I'd love a place with a nice pool, maybe even right on the beach. And good reviews for the food and service. Sounds like you want the full resort experience. That will probably cost a pretty penny, but it could be worth it. You're right, it's not going to be cheap. But I figure I can splurge a little since I haven't taken a proper vacation in ages. In that case, let's dig in and see what hidden gems we can uncover. I'm happy to help you research options. Awesome, thanks John. I'm getting excited just thinking about kicking back on the beach. Me too. This is gonna be a great trip, I can already tell. Alright, let's get planning. Lesson 15, The Collectivist Mindset Morning, Anna. I was reading an interesting article about cultural differences in how people view themselves. Oh really? What did it say? I'm always fascinated by that kind of cross-cultural psychology. Apparently, in more collectivistic cultures, people tend to think of themselves in terms of their social relationships. Hmm, that makes sense. So the individual isn't seen as this autonomous, independent entity, like in individualistic cultures. Exactly. The self is much more defined by one's roles, duties, and connections to others. That must lead to some very different ways of communicating and making decisions. 
The focus is on the group, not the individual. Precisely. Things like harmony, loyalty, and duty to the collective are prioritized over personal goals and self-expression. Wow, that's a really fascinating perspective. I can see how that would shape someone's entire worldview and behavior. It's a stark contrast to the hyper-individualistic culture we have in the West. I find it really eye-opening to learn about these differences. Me too. It makes me wonder how I might communicate or interact differently if I was raised in a more collectivistic society. That's a great point. Our sense of self is so deeply ingrained, it's hard to imagine seeing things through that lens. Definitely. It's a good reminder that there's no one right way to view the world. Cultural context is so important. Absolutely. I'm grateful we had this chance to explore these ideas together. There's always more to learn about the human experience. I agree, John. Conversations like this really expand my perspective. Thanks for sharing your insights. Anytime, Anna. I enjoy our thought-provoking chats. Shall we move on to planning that vacation now? Lesson 16, Shared Experiences Hey Anna, can I get your take on something? It's about shared experiences. Absolutely, John. I'd be glad to discuss that with you. Well, I was reading this article about how shared anguish can be a powerful force for bringing people together. That's an interesting perspective. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? The idea is that when people go through difficult or traumatic experiences together, it can create a sense of unity. I see, that makes sense. There's often a shared understanding and empathy that develops. Exactly. Even if the specifics of their struggles differ, the underlying emotions can be quite similar. Right, a shared sense of pain or adversity can foster a stronger communal bond. Absolutely. And it's not just negative experiences either. Positive shared moments can have a similar effect. Good point. Celebrating triumphs and achievements together can also be a unifying force. Definitely. It's about that feeling of being in it together, of weathering the storm side by side. I agree that shared journey, whether joyful or sorrowful, can be incredibly powerful. It's amazing how human connections can form over shared experiences, isn't it? It really is. It's a testament to our capacity for empathy and community. Couldn't have said it better myself. There's something special about those shared bonds. Absolutely. It's a profound aspect of the human experience. Well said. It's been great discussing this with you, Anna. Lesson 17, Decorating for Distinction All right, Anna, I've been thinking about redecorating my place. I want to make it really stand out. 
Ooh, that sounds exciting. What kind of unique pieces did you have in mind? I'm happy to brainstorm ideas. Well, I was hoping to find some one-of-a-kind artwork or furniture to really give the space some character. I love that idea. Have you considered checking out any local artisan markets or antique shops? That's a great suggestion. I bet I could find some real gems there. Something with a bit of history and personality. Definitely. Unique, handcrafted items can make such a difference in a space. They add so much warmth and character. Absolutely. I'm envisioning like an abstract painting or a really interesting sculpture as the focal point. Ooh, that would be stunning. And you could build the rest of the room's design around that statement piece. Exactly. I want it to feel curated, you know? Not just a bunch of random stuff thrown together. Definitely. A cohesive, thoughtful design is key. Maybe you could even find a vintage piece of furniture to refurbish. Ooh, that's a fantastic idea. I bet I could find an old dresser or armoire and give it new life. Yes. That would be perfect. It would add such depth and character to the space. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. This is going to be a really fun project. I'm excited for you. Let me know if you need any help sourcing unique items or putting the design together. Will do, Anna. I appreciate you brainstorming with me. Time to start hunting for those special pieces. Lesson 18, Dive into Adventure Morning, Anna. I wanted to tell you about this amazing scuba diving trip I just got back from. Ooh, how exciting. I've always wanted to try scuba diving. What was it like? It was an absolute blast. The underwater world was just breathtaking. I can only imagine. Where did you go? I'd love to hear all about it. I went to this incredible spot in the Caribbean. The coral reefs were so vibrant and full of marine life. Wow, that sounds incredible. Did you get to see any cool sea creatures up close? Oh, definitely. I swam right alongside some sea turtles, and there were these huge schools of tropical fish. That must have been an amazing experience. I'm getting envious just thinking about it. It really was. And the coolest part was getting to explore these underwater caves and canyons. Caves and canyons? That sounds so adventurous. Were you a little nervous at all? A little, but mostly just excited. The guides were amazing and made sure we were safe the whole time. That's good to hear. I'd love to try it someday, but I think I'd be pretty nervous at first. Don't worry, the instructors are experts at putting first-time divers at ease. It's an incredible feeling once you get down there. I bet. 
Were there any other memorable moments from the trip you want to share? Hmm, well, there was this one time we came across a pot of dolphins. They swam right up to us. No way. That must have been magical. I can only imagine how incredible that must have felt. It was unreal. I still can't quite believe I had the chance to interact with them like that. Well, you've definitely inspired me to give scuba diving a try. I'm going to have to start looking into lessons. Do it. I promise you won't regret it. Let me know if you need any recommendations for good dive sites. Lesson 19, Exploring the Mall. Hey Anna, did you catch wind of that new mall that just opened up downtown? No, I hadn't heard about that. What's it like? It's amazing. You've got to check it out. There's so much to see and do. Ooh, really? What kind of stores and attractions do they have? Well, there's a department store on the ground floor that sells all the latest trendy clothes. Trendy clothes, huh? Sounds like the perfect place for a little shopping spree. Definitely. And upstairs, there's an incredible movie theater with reclining seats. Reclining seats? That sounds so luxurious. I bet the movie-going experience is top-notch. It really is. And that's not all, they've got this huge food court with every type of cuisine imaginable. Ooh, a gourmet food court? Now you've really piqued my interest. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. I know, right? I spend hours just wandering around and sampling all the different flavors. It sounds like a true shopper's and foodie's paradise. I'll have to carve out some time to check it out. You definitely should. I think you'd really enjoy exploring all that the mall has to offer. I'm sure I would. Thanks for the recommendation, John. Looks like I know where I'm spending my next free afternoon. Anytime. Let me know if you want some company on your mall adventure. Lesson 20, Picnic Perfection. Hey Anna, have you checked the forecast lately? It's supposed to be gorgeous out today. Morning, John. Yes, I saw it's going to be sunny and warm, perfect picnic weather. That's exactly what I was thinking. Would you be up for a little outdoor adventure? Absolutely. I'd love to pack a nice picnic lunch and find a scenic spot to enjoy it. Wonderful. I was hoping you'd say that. Do you have any favorite parks or green spaces in mind? Hmm, there's a lovely little nature preserve not too far from here, that would be ideal. Ooh, that sounds perfect. I haven't been there yet, but I've heard it has some beautiful views. It does. And it's usually not too crowded, so we can find a nice quiet spot to relax. Sounds like a plan then. 
I can grab a blanket and some tasty picnic goodies. Do you want to split the menu? Sure, that works for me. Maybe I can bring some fresh fruit, crusty bread, and a nice bottle of wine. Yum, that all sounds delicious. I'll handle the main dishes, maybe some grilled chicken and a big salad. MMM, that combo would be wonderful. I can't wait to feast in the great outdoors. Me neither. It's going to be so peaceful and rejuvenating. Just what we need after a busy week. Absolutely. Some quality time in nature is the perfect way to recharge and reconnect. I agree. This picnic is going to be the highlight of my weekend, I can already tell. Same here. I'm really looking forward to it. Shall we plan to meet up around noon? Sounds good to me. I'll text you the exact location once I scope it out. This is going to be great. I'm sure it will be. I can't wait. It's going to be such a lovely day for an outdoor adventure. Definitely. I'm so glad we're making this happen. It's going to be a picnic to remember. Lesson 21, Neighborhood Chit Chat. Hey Anna, do you live around here? Yes, actually, I live just a few blocks away. How about you? Same here. I'm right in the neighborhood too. Small world, isn't it? It really is. I'm surprised we haven't run into each other before. Me too. We'll have to change that and get to know our local neighbors a bit better. Definitely. It's always nice to be friendly with the people who live nearby. Absolutely. So tell me, what do you like most about living in this area? Oh, there's so much to love. The community feel is just wonderful. I agree, it has such a nice, cozy vibe. And the local shops and restaurants are great. Absolutely. There's always something new and interesting to discover. For sure. And the parks and green spaces around here are real gems. Yes. Perfect for taking a stroll or having a picnic on a sunny day. Exactly. It's the ideal neighborhood, if you ask me. I couldn't agree more. I feel lucky to call this place home. Me too. It's been great chatting with you, Anna. We'll have to get together again sometime. Definitely. I'd love that. We can swap more neighborhood recommendations. Sounds like a plan. I'll be in touch soon. Lesson 22, Stress Relief Strategies Morning, Anna. I wanted to ask you about something. Do you ever feel like the demands of daily life are just overwhelming? Absolutely, John. It can be so easy to get bogged down by stress and anxiety these days. 
I know exactly what you mean. Sometimes I feel like I'm just barely keeping my head above water. Me too. But I've actually been trying out some new strategies to help manage the stress better. Oh really? I'd love to hear more about that. What kinds of things have you been doing? Well, one thing that's made a big difference is making time for regular exercise. Even just a quick walk can do wonders. That's a great point. I find that moving my body helps clear my mind and boosts my mood. Exactly. And I've also been practicing some simple meditation and deep breathing exercises. Ooh, that's a good one. I've heard meditation can be really powerful for reducing stress. It really is. Just taking a few minutes each day to focus on my breathing and be present has been so helpful. I'll have to give that a try. Any other tips you'd recommend for handling stress more effectively? Hmm, let me think. Oh, and making sure I get enough sleep has been crucial. Being well rested makes a big difference. Ah yes, that's so true. When I'm running on empty, even small things can feel overwhelming. Exactly. And don't forget the importance of maintaining a balanced, healthy diet too. Good point. Fueling my body with nutritious foods definitely keeps me feeling more energized. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to reach out to friends and loved ones for support when you need it. That's a great reminder. Having a strong support system can make a world of difference. Definitely. It's so easy to try to tough it out on our own, but connection is so important. You're right about that. I'm feeling more focused and better equipped to handle stressful situations already.